Good morning. Welcome to Beulah First Missionary Baptist Church of Detroit, Michigan Worship Experience. Under the leadership of Reverend Reuben H. Benjamin, pastor. Here at Beulah First, we are anchored by these three pillars of Christ. Love, compassion, and forgiveness. If you need one or all three, you will experience them here. Let's go into the worship experience and see what God is speaking to you. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Beulah First Missionary Baptist Church Worship Experience. So glad to have you on our Facebook page this morning. I'm Pastor Reuben H. Benjamin. Again, we're just so thankful that you've taken out of your schedule, the Beulah family and others, visitors and friends to join us on our worship experience this morning. First, I want to thank all of our Beulah First family and others who came out on Friday to help us as we gave out over 100 plus food boxes to feed needy families. I thank God for you. We could not have done it without you. So we want to send our many, many thanks out to you. I want to also ask all of you to continue to keep the Woods family lifted up and the loss of our dear mother, Mother Woods. I ask that you continue to pray for that family and as others who are facing bereavement at this time. Uh, I don't have a Christmas story or sermon for you this morning. I do want you to make sure that in this season, you remember Jesus is the reason for this season and you take the time out through the gospels to uh, go through and understand and read again the Christmas story. Make sure you share it to your children or your grandchildren if you have grandchildren and make sure they know it. And it's good for us to, again, to go over it as well. But uh, there is a word from the Lord. And I, I know that this word will benefit us today if we take it in. And so we're going to pray and then we're going to get right to the word. I do ask for you to remember that, again, there is no Bible study on Tuesday until January the 5th. To January the 5th, we will come back together again uh, on our call-in Bible study. But there is a, a prayer going forth on this uh, Christmas Eve, on this Thursday at 6, at 6. We will be praying again at 6. So you join us then and so that we can uh, lift up the word of God and share with God that we're thankful that he has brought us to Christmas Eve. And we believe that he's going to let us go forth into Christmas and the new year. So let us pray and we'll get right to the word. <clears throat> kind God, our Father, I ask that you now that you hide the manservant behind the sacred desk. Oh God, let my imperfection not be a distraction as I always pray. But God, I thank you for you allowed me to be this vessel to be used once again on today. Your word is already blessed. And God, I just ask that you allow me to share it and make sure that I share it without error. For these and other blessings, we're asking that son, Jesus name, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I ask that you turn with me to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, the third chapter, verses one through 10. And I'm using the New Living Translation for our hearing this morning. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses one through 10. And the word of God said, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and peoples. Your translation may say man. And you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Verse seven, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vat will overflow with good wine. Beloved, that is the word of God for our text this morning. Just for a few minutes, I'd like to preach from this thought, preach from this thought, favor without favoritism. Favor without 
favoritism. It has been shared and widely confirmed that blacks and brown and those who were confined to nursing homes have bore the burden of this pandemic. Every statistic have also confirmed that African Americans experienced twice the death and health issues and concerns than any other race. When the question was asked, how come this is happening? Many shared these reasons. Poor health conditions that plague the African American community, diabetes, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, chronic asthma, just to name a few diseases uh, that are bringing havoc to our community. Also, lack of adequate health care available also in our community. For us now, African Americans, this was not a surprise, for we have been experiencing this all of our lives. Can I get a witness? Uh, whether it was health care or job disadvantage or available good housing to find, you name it, we have experienced it. Favor without favoritism. I believe today that we can also make a case for that what I want to share with you in this morning message, hear me now, a lot of it now can be traced back to racism and favoritism. Am I right about it? In the book of James, the Bible speaks very harshly against displaying favoritism, especially for the Christian. James 2 and 9 says, but if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. That's what James 2 and 9 says. Romans 2 and 11 says, for God does not show favoritism. Let me say that again. For God does not show favoritism. He's a God of favor, but not of favoritism. Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 34 to 36 says, and this was the good news to the Gentiles. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do, hear me now, what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord over all. Jesus tells us that the who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's favor, not favoritism. Beloved, I'm so glad that we serve a God who grants us favor, but not under the umbrella of favoritism. Favoritism, favoritism, the practice of giving unfair peripheral treatment to one person or a group at the expense of others. In other words, helping someone to gain an advantage by hurting another to do so. Many of us now have experienced this cancer called favoritism firsthand. You may be asking, Pastor Benjamin, what does it look like? Well, let me share this with you. Last hired, first fired. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Lost out of getting a job but you were the most qualified, but you didn't get it. Lost out of getting a home, even though you could afford it. Lost out of getting a promotion, but they hired the son of the manager. Lost out of getting a loan because you lived in Detroit. Lost out of receiving an inheritance because you didn't stay at home like your sister, but you went away and made a life for yourself. Lost out of getting an assignment in ministry, all because... You wasn't a yes man or a yes woman. Favoritism has invaded our lives. Somebody ought to type on the screen, I'm tired of it. Somebody type that on the screen, I'm tired of it. Favoritism. And God is saying to you and he's saying to me, we must not live this way. Beloved, I'm so glad today that I, uh, that I have a God, that you have a God, that I don't have to get mad with you 
about what blessing that I'm receiving because the same God that gave you yours will give me mine. A God of favor, not a God of favoritism. What he has done for you, he'll do the same for me. Oh, somebody ought to get excited on your couch right now or at your living room or at your kitchen table and they're shouting, glory, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. I'm excited and I'm thankful that I have a God who will grant me favor. I don't have to trust favoritism for man, but I've got a God who will give me favor. Somebody ought to say, he'll do it for me. Type that on the screen. He will do it. For me, God will do it for me. Favoritism has even now become a cancer, as you know this, in the house of God. For many decisions that are being made are being made because of favoritism and not fairness. It is my hope today, beloved, that what I share with you will help us embrace the righteousness, there it is, the righteousness of God, which will yield us favor from God, or take us to the direction of God, and then God will give us favor. I don't know about you, but I don't want to seek favoritism of man, but I sure enough want the favored blessings of God. In this text today, beloved, in this text today, beloved, in Proverbs chapter 3, King Solomon shares some great life principles that will help you and I understand what it means to receive favor from God or how we can receive favor from God instead of pursuing man favoritism. Let's look at the text this morning and see the three things that King Solomon points out to us that would encourage us to seek God's favor and not pursue man favoritism. I don't know about you, beloved, but I do want God's favor in my life. Do you want God's favor for your life? Well, I've got three things. Here we are at my first point. My first point with favor without favoritism. Beloved, today I really say to you every Sunday, but you need to get your pen and paper and get ready to write these down. These will make a difference in your life. Here's my first point. Make sure your character exemplifies conviction and your heart overflows with kindness. Let me say that again. Make sure your character that's how you live, exemplify conviction and your heart overflows, overflows with kindness. Look, I'm in the text. I'm in the text. Come with me to verse three and four. It says this, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your hearts. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Let's go back to that first phrase, that first phrase. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Loyalty. Beloved, we need to have loyalty in the house of God today. You know, sometimes we get new members come in and we're so thankful for them but before the ink dries on their welcome letter, they're already looking for another church. Where is your loyalty? Christ is requiring of us to have some loyalty. Matter of fact, he also says that our life, our character ought to be exemplary. We ought to have something that stands out. People today uh, say one thing and do another. You know, I, I, I want somebody, when you tell me something on Monday, when I talk to you on Tuesday, you have a conviction about it. When I talk to you on Wednesday, you're still convicted. When I talk to you on Saturday, Sunday, you are still convicted. We find so many wishy-washy folks today, uh, for they tell you you can count on them today. But before this afternoon is out, they've already changed their opinion and their mind. God is saying to us, 
We have to stand, no matter if it doesn't look right, no matter if it doesn't look well for us, but if it's the right thing to do, if it's the will of God, he's requiring us to what? To stand on in there, hang on in there. He didn't say every day would be pleasant and happiness will flow. He says, but that I'm a God that will be with you. I will go with you through the thick and thin, through the valleys and the shadows of death, but you shall fear no evil. What are you standing for today, beloved? Can God count on you? Joshua said this to his house and to the tribes of Israel. He said, I don't know what God that you are going to serve, whether it was God of the past or God of, of gods with the little G. He said, but for I ask for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. I'm saying that today. You ought to say that today as well. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Somebody type, it's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. Kindness. Oh, my God. Don't you wish the world had more kindness? As I have had an opportunity to participate in this election series and watching all of the words, the mean, hateful things that was being shared, uh, looking at all of the court cases and the bitterness. We need kindness in America again. That's a commodity that is lacking. Finding somebody who shares a kind word. Beloved, in our loss of our dear mother, Mother Woods, and as we shared on Facebook, Facebook, her passing, and people began to put comments. One of the threads that was constantly in all the comments was, she had a kind heart. Mother Woods would pray for the lost. She would teach our children. Uh, she would pick you up if you needed a ride. If you give her uh, a challenge in ministry, even if she wasn't gifted in that area, because I've done that. She said, well, Pastor, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try. Mother Woods was that kind of person. She had a kind spirit, never raising her voice. Matter of fact, you had to lean in sometime to hear what she was saying. That's what we need today is kindness. You know, we should want to be kind. Kindness will take you where money can't keep you. Kindness will keep you in a position even when your skills for the job is depleting. Kindness will speak for you greater than any elaborate vocabulary can express your feelings. I tell you, that's what kindness will do for you. Let's be more kind. Look at the favor you will gain if you become more kind and you stand for something. Your character have exemplified characteristics. Here it is, verse 4. Then you will find favor with who? Both God and man. You're getting a double portion. You want to make sure you find favor with God, but God says when you do these things, not only will you receive his favor, but you will receive favor from man as well, and you will earn a good reputation. Favor without favoritism. Well, I've already shared my first point with you. You should have already written it down. Let me state it again. Make sure your character exemplifies conviction that you stand for something and your heart overflows with kindness. Well, the second point really stepped on my toes. Uh, I'm going to admit it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to step on some of your toes. The second point here, I really want you to get it. Here it is. If we are going to see favor and not seek favoritism, here's what we need to do. When you let go of your stubbornness, your pathway will find blessings. I know I need to say that again. When you let go of your stubbornness, your pathway will find blessings. I'm in the text. Look at the text. This is the phrase we see often when people are stubborn. 
I'm grown now. In other words, what they're telling you, leave me alone. I can make whatever decision I want to make. I don't have to listen to you or take no advice. Look at here, beloved. No matter how old we are, we still need advice. The problem is we go to Facebook and Instagram and we know we're going to get what we ask because if somebody put something on there and say, what do y'all think? They're going to tell you what you need to hear. So early this evening, there was a picture of a, of a, a star who had a picture of herself, a husband and her children. The, 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 well, the young lady is really an adult, but she was 19. Her dress was too short for the picture. One guy had enough nerve to say, beautiful picture, but the dress is too short. And look at the comment that came after that, after the man. How dare you say the girl is too short? She's a grown woman. It don't matter if she was 65 years of age. Somebody need to be willing to stand up and tell the truth. He says, the dress was too short. I had to hit on the button. I agree with you. You see, look at the text. I'm in verse five and six, verse five and six. It says this, we've got to let go of our stubbornness and tell the truth. Don't be so much concerned about what we want and what we want to say and what path we want to follow because it's not about us. It's not about the path that we follow. We want to make sure that our footsteps is in God's will for the songwriter says, order my steps, Lord, in your word and in your way. So look at the text in verse five and six. It says, trust in who? The Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Verse six, this first part, it says, seek his will. Let me say that again. Seek his will in all you do. I like that all you do. See, because sometimes we tell God, we don't really need you right now. I got this thing. I'm on my roll. God, I'll let you know when I want you to jump in. As though we're playing jump rope that we're going to tag God in. God says, no, no, go ahead. If you started with it, finish with it. You see, we ought to start with God and what? Finish with him. He says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. You see, I ain't smart enough. You ain't smart enough to know which path you should take. That's what I told you right now. I think in a couple of sermons ago in this pandemic, you really need to let go of your stubbornness and make sure you're following the will of God. Make sure that's who you're listening to. Somebody ought to type on the screen right now. Lord, advise me. Lord, advise me. I, I don't want to take advice for somebody else. I, I really want the Lord to speak to me today uh, because it has gotten worse. And just because a vaccine has been approved doesn't mean we will live to receive it. And so, Lord, make sure that I hear you that I will take the necessary steps to remain safe, not only for me, but I'll leave the Beulah First family in your will. Favor without favoritism. Well, I've already told you, my first point was this, make sure your character exemplifies conviction and your heart overflows with kindness. That second point, I hope you wrote it down, but let's say it again. When you let righteousness become a witness, the second point is when you let go of your stubbornness, your pathway will find blessings. When you let go of your stubbornness, your pathway will find blessings. Well, my last point as I close the message out, it's almost or really as good as the second point. My third point is always or is really as good as the second one. Here it is. When you let righteousness becomes your reality instead of now and then. I'll say it again. When you let righteousness becomes your reality instead of letting it be now and then. See, we've got too many of us vacillating from now and then. You know, uh, it's like exercise. I, I'm exercising real good because I want to get into a certain dress or I want to get in shape to, to be able to do this or do that. But 
After a while, it just kind of becomes what? Now and then. And God says, no, no, that's not the kind of Christian that will get my continued favor. God is saying it can't be a righteousness now and then, but there must be some consistency to how you live. Righteousness should be a 24-7, uh, 365 days in a year. Righteousness should prevail every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. See, it, it should be. It should be. It says here in the text, if you want God's favor, look at what it says. In verse 7, 8, 9, and 10 is where I'm at. Verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. First, let me share this. There are three men in the Bible that God call righteous. Noah, Job, and Daniel. I, I wish I had time to unpack that and really talk about this righteousness thing. Matter of fact, that's a whole study topic. That's a whole sermon within itself about righteousness. Now, uh, when you've heard the scripture that Paul spoke, it says, there is none righteous. So many folks may say, well, pastor, how can you say somebody is righteous when Paul is saying none is righteous? Well, let me clarify. Paul was speaking to the Jews because the Jews thought because of their uh, uh, connection to Christ as a Jew, they felt like they was righteous just because they were a Jew. And he came and said, none are righteous, not the Gentiles, nor the Jew. In other words, you can't be inherited in it. You can't gain it as an inheritance. It is required of you to ask God for it. And then there are some principles of living that establish you as being righteous. That's why he said these three men, Noah, Job, and Daniel, was righteous. Go look it up. You see, if you want God's favor, look at what he says about righteousness. I'm in verse 7. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom, your own way of thinking. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And look what it will do for you in verse 8. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Beloved, it's just like that scripture in Corinthians when we're talking in communion. For, for if we want healing for our body, if we want strength for our bones, then we've got to get back to living a righteous life. But we don't do it in our strength. We do it in God's strength. He'll help us be righteous. Then it goes on and says this in verse 8. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. You see, Abel gave God the best fruit that he had because he gave God his first. See, Cain kept stuff back until he figured out that he had enough for himself, and then he brought it to God, and God rejected his gift. You see, because God has given us so much favor, there is no way today would I continue or start to pull back from God with my tithes and offering. No, no. God says he deserves it whether we're in a building or not. We're still having church. We're still having church. Matter of fact, we wouldn't have a church. He's still blessing you. And so we should remember that and give what God says is required. Now, God don't need our money, but it's in showing an obedience till he's asked us how to live. So beloved, we should honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Verse 10, then, then he will fill your barns with grain. Not before, but then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats with overflowing with good wine. Beloved, I don't know about you, uh, but I need an overflow. Somebody type, overflow God, overflow God. You see, that's what the kind of blessing I want. That's the kind of favor I want. I don't want to just get to the top, but I want God to bless me with overflow. Do you want overflow? Then do what the word says here about righteousness, because then God will give you his favor and watch 
your barns, that means your house have resources, and then watch them overflow with good wine, with goodness. Thank you, Jesus. You are God of favor. For I know now that favoritism of a man won't last. And hear me now, the price is too high for a payback. But God, your favor has no expiration date. I need to say that again to somebody because somebody's looking for a favor in the wrong place. God's favor has no expiration date. In other words, it just keeps growing. It just continues to stay fresh. That's what I love about God. It will sustain you when man's favoritism will run out. As soon as he falls out with you or as soon as something happens that he doesn't like, he may call your favor to be paid back. And don't you know it? You'll never get through paying it back. Haven't you had that friend uh huh? when you gave them a real favor and they keep bringing it up, keep bringing it up? You said, I know what I'll do. I'll never ask for from them anything else because they're going to never let me live it down. That's why you want to not take favoritism from man, but you want the favor of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. The reason why I want God's favor, it has no expiration date, as I told you, and it's already been paid for at Calvary. God gave me a blessing, and did he pay for it? All I had to do is receive it by living my life righteous. That's what God is saying. Beloved, favor, not favoritism is what I want. Favor without favoritism. I'm so glad today that that's the kind of God we have. I pray that this message has blessed you. I pray that it bless you. If it bless you, I ask you today, will you share this? Share this to some other person to know that Favor without favoritism is what they want. Not the favoritism of man, but the favor of God. You share that. Secondly, we want to make sure that you know where favor comes from. It comes from Jesus. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm telling you right now, you have an opportunity to do so. Here it is. Here it is. As A, B, C, as easy as one, two, three, A, accept that he is the Son of God and he's come down to earth. B, believe. Believe that he's died for your sins and he rose on the third day. And three, confess or see, confess, confess your sins. And we believe that you have received the plan of salvation. Lastly, beloved, give, give. We're asking you to give today. We're asking you to give today. Three ways. One, you can mail it into the church, 4643 Moran Street. You can then come by the church every Saturday. The deacons are there, trustees from 10 to 1. And finally, the Giblified app. But whatever you do today, give. Give to your church. God bless you. And we will see you again on another Sunday. But remember, we are having prayer at Christmas Eve. And we'll see you then. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for tuning in.